Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Corey Levels, and I am a technical consulting engineer here at Intel. I'm very excited to get the opportunity to come and present to you guys today uh, in this workshop for GPU offloading with Intel Analyzers with my colleague, Jennifer. For this workshop, there are a few setup items that we need to comp complete before we start profiling. So first, we'll explain how to start a GPU node on Intel's dev cloud. Next, we'll re we will review the C++ Mandelbrot OpenMP sample that we'll be using to demonstrate the profiling workflow and describe just a few changes that we'll make to the code. During the demo, we will use the Intel VTUM profiler server to collect and view our results. But before we start, uh, we'll, give, we'll give some additional information on how to start the server in the DevCloud SSH terminal. And then finally, I will hand it over to Jennifer to start the demo. So the workflow for this demo, uh, the workflow for the demo is going to consist of the following steps that we've kind of illustrated here on this slide. So number one, we'll log into a DevCloud GPU node via an SSH terminal and configure and build the Mandelbrot OpenMP sample. Then we'll go ahead and run Intel Advisor's offload advisor on the parallel CPU implementation of the Mandelbrot function to estimate the performance benefit of offloading to a Gen 9 GT2 GPU. And with that, we'll also look into the offload advisor's recommendations and explain how they were used to determine the implementation of the offload Mandelbrot function. Number three, we'll run Intel Advisor's GP roofline on the offloaded Mandelbrot implementation to check performance and any additional guidance. And lastly, we'll run the GPU hotspot analysis and Intel v profiler for deeper insights into the OpenMP tasks and GPU utilization. DevCloud setup. Intel DevCloud provides a free environment for testing the latest Intel CPUs and GPUs. Intel One API toolkits are already installed and set up and ready to go for use. Running workloads on the DevCloud is very straightforward once you have opened an account and have configured your SSH connection. So first, you log in. We'll be using the SigWin setup for the demo. This is going to bring you to a login node. And then you'll start an interactive GPU node using the command shown. We'll be doing the majority of the work in this node. After that, you'll download the Mandelbrot OpenMP sample from Intel's GitHub. We'll describe this more uh, in the next slide. We'll also use the DevCloud node to start the Intel v profiler server when we get to that part in the demo. So Mandelbrot OpenMP. So, so the Mandelbrot OpenMP sample is available through Intel's GitHub repository. This sample includes four implementations of a Mandelbrot algorithm with different OpenMP options for parallelism and vectorization. Mandelbrot OpenMP with the GPU offload. To demonstrate the GPU offload analysis in Intel Advisor and VTune Profiler, we're adding a fifth function with target directives for OpenMP. It is essentially a copy and paste of the OpenMP offload function using different OpenMP pragmas. This code change would generally be made after reviewing the offload advisor results and guidance, but we're describing it here to assist with the live demo portion. In the main main.cpp, we've changed the max depth from 100 to 5,000. This is just to increase the workload side size. We've also made some changes to the call. Uh, we've also made some changes to call the new offload Mandelbrot function based on command line arguments. The Mandelbrot OpenMP makefile. To enable the OpenMP offload functionality, we changed the makefile to use the ICPX compiler and replace the QOpenMP flags with FIOpenMP and FOpenMP targets. We also added a dash G for debug symbols and a dash D Intel compiler to ensure the function gets called. Intel VTune profiler server setup. This is just a note on running the Intel VTune profiler server, which some of you may not be as familiar with. There are detailed instructions in the online VTune cookbook, but, but starting the server primarily consists of running three commands. Once it's running, you can access the VTune GUI from your browser and profile the DevCloud node directly. This step will be performed later in the live demo. And with that, I will hand it over to my colleague, Jennifer, to begin the demo. Thank you. Hi there. I'm Jennifer DiMatteo, a technical consulting engineer here at Intel. In this demo, I'm going to walk you through the process of taking a sample that is using the CPU only 
and looking for opportunities to offload parts of that workload to the GPU and then profile the GPU offloaded workload and look for further optimization opportunities and to check the performance of the, the GPU offloading versus the CPU only uh, code utilization. So with that, I'll get started. Um, on my screen here, I have a SIGWIN terminal on my Windows uh, laptop. And uh, we do have instructions on how to set this up for DevCloud, which is what I'm going to be using to uh, run the sample and the uh, one API tools. So you, you can, like I said, set this up with, uh, with SIGWIN. It's pretty easy. Or you can use um, any other SSH terminal like PuTTY. I'm going to be using um, SIGWIN, and I have everything already set up to connect to the, uh, the dev cloud nodes. So I'll do that now. And when it connects to the login node, I'm going to go ahead and start an interactive um, um, session with a GPU node. I have the command here. And there are there are different kinds of nodes that you can run on on DevCloud. I'm choosing just the the standard GPU node. So this uses um, uh, Intel processor codenamed Coffee Lake, and it has an integrated uh, Gen 9 GPU. So we're going to test. Um, uh, we're going to do some modeling to offload to the Gen 9 GPU, and then we're going to check the performance what, once we've done that offloading uh, on the GPU. So the, the sample that I'm using, as um, was mentioned earlier in the presentation, is this Mandelbrot OpenMP sample. So I'll go ahead. I've already uh, downloaded it from GitHub. and. Um, you can it. Uh, you can do the same. It's uh, available as um, part of the C++ uh, GitHub samples, and it uh, uses different um, different OpenMP options to uh, to optimize for the CPU. So uh, serial um, implementation. Uh, sim just SIMD, just parallel, and then SIMD and parallel. And for this example, I am going to be just testing the uh, the parallel uh, implementation because I didn't want to get um, I didn't want to go with the completely unoptimized um, function because it, if you're going to offload to GPU, the chances are you probably have done some some CPU optimization already. But on the other hand, um, sometimes you can get best performance even just using the CPU versus the GPU. Not in every case, but you know, you if if you've already got the CPU, you might as well use it to the full potential and then um, see where you can offload to a GPU. And that's what we're going to do today. And so, um, first on this this uh, sample. I'm going to run Intel Advisor and the Offload Advisor function. Uh, it's it's kind of um, Intel Advisor has different reports and uh, different um, analysis types you can run, and it's all part of the same uh, Advisor package. And then it has different different levels of collection you can run. Um, and in this uh, in this demo, I'm going to start out with the um, the survey analysis. So this is just kind of the the initial um, um, you know profiling of the data uh, or of the application to get you know kind of the the general um, characteristics of the workload. So I'm going to pass it the Mandelbrot um, uh, the Mandelbrot sample, and then this uh, the argument of three will tell it to use the parallel. Uh, version of the implementation. 
and it doesn't take um, the, the nice thing about this workload and the commands I'm running is it doesn't um, take long that I so I can do this real time uh, in a demo versus uh, you know trying to take shortcuts and um, and look at pre-collected uh, samples or uh, pre-collected results so that you can uh, really get an idea of how this process goes and kind of how how easy it can be. Uh, your, your results may vary on more complex uh, workloads, but I wanted to use a sim simple sample so it'll be quick and um, hopefully relevant to everyone watching. So that completed. And now we're going to run another uh, analysis that will um, target the, the Gen 9 GPU. So this is going to model um, performance on the GPU. It doesn't do any, any kind of hardware um, um, counter usage. It's just looking at how the, the sample is expected to perform on this target device of the Gen 9 uh, GT2. And you can use different devices or specify different devices. It doesn't have to be the device that you have on the um, the node that you're running, uh, it can I could I could tell it um, uh, Gen 11, or if I was just running this on a non GPU node, I can still uh, you know check this performance and and get a uh, a prediction and profile of how my um, my CPU code is expected to run on the GPU. So this is just um, this is just modeling it here, but I wanted to I wanted to run the whole process where I have a GPU to just uh, to streamline it and and do a comparison of the predicted performance versus the actual performance that that we'll um, collect later on in the demo. So uh, we've run that. It gives you know as in the last. Um, analysis, it gives a summary of, of what happened, but not too many details. So it has, uh, you know, gives the elapsed time, the total time on the CPU, and then uh, some vectorization information. And in this case, uh, some um, a, a GFLOPS metric, because we did run, um, uh, for our collection, we collected trip counts and um, flops, and this is this is a collection you would also run to get a roof line, um, a CPU roof line. But we did tell it uh, specifically to target the Gen 9 uh, um, GPU so that we can get information about about how that's going to um, to perform. And then the third analysis is going to be building that that projection and report. So um, the, the collection type is projection. And again, we're telling it uh, to, to provide uh, uh, metrics for that Gen 9 uh, GT2 GPU. And uh, the reason there's so many steps here to get to this final report is because they they made advisor kind of modular so that if you were running, um, if you wanted to get a roof line report or um, a memory access pattern analysis, you don't have to go through all of the steps every time. You can kind of build on um, the steps that you've already run, uh, especially that survey. So, uh, we have uh, a bit more information in the, the command line report that it returned. Um, the, the measured CPU time, um, the, the accelerated code speed up, and then we have um, some, some loops it identified for um, potential speed up if we were to offload. And what we wanna do though is actually visualize this uh, in a um, in the advisor GUI, and it, you can also create an HTML report for this. But I'm just going to go ahead and and um, 
and create a snapshot. Show you how that works. And this does this does require that uh, the the system that you run the um, that you view the results in has uh, advisor installed on it. So you can generate HTML reports and view them in a browser. Um, or if you do have advisor installed um, on a, you know, on a, a Windows or, you know, whatever graphical system, um, you can view it there. And that's what I'm going to do. And the snapshot utility is, is pretty nice because it will pack the, um, it packages everything up and puts your sources and binaries in there. So when you do copy the data from one machine, the results, I should say, from one machine to another, you still get the, um, the source code and you don't have to change any of your mappings uh, when you're going to view the data. This, um, this shouldn't take much longer. And then what I'll do is because I don't have a, I don't have a VNC or any kind of um, um, graphical interface to this particular uh, node. I'm just going to copy it to my to my local machine. And I have I have an, I'll just keep it small up here. So I can. Um, just run this um, SCP command and copy it to my local uh, um, just um, SIGWIN folder. And it's a it's pretty small, so it doesn't take very long. And when I do uh, open this up in Advisor, uh, DevCloud is going to have the latest version of One API installed. So you want to make sure that you also have the latest version of the um, of advisor if you're running this because uh, the results aren't necessarily going to be um, forward compatible. So taking results um, using version, um, you know, 2021 uh, update two will not uh, may not show up correctly if you're opening them on um, version 2021.1. So that's just just something to consider if you're going to use this particular workflow. So what I want to do is open my uh, my result, and it just brings me to the project I already have running. My Sigmund folder, and here is my snapshot. So I can just open that up. There is no um, there is no real project for this. Because it's a it's a remote um, or or it was taken on a different machine, so I can't I can't run any other um, um, any other reports from from here that that need to be actually run on my workload on the dev cloud. So it's just viewing the results, and then if I want to run anything else, I need to go back to the uh, the dev cloud node and run them there. So here I'm viewing the uh, the summary of the offload modeling, and this is um, has the same information we saw on the command line, um, but with a, you know in a, a graphical format and with more details. So we see that um, the speed up for the accelerated code is estimated to be almost two times. And the accelerated code includes any loop it identified for offloading. So if we um, only speed up the uh, one, one of the loops, it may be a little bit less than that because we're not, we're not looking at both. And in this case, uh, it identified two loops for uh, potential offloading. One of them is in um, the Mandelbrot sample, and the other one is in um, in uh, this library that we're not uh, we're not changing. So we're not we're not going to try to offload this. It says you, the the compress um, loop for the uh, the image write. It says we'll get a very big speed up, but it only took 
28 milliseconds of the entire run. So there's uh, even if we could uh, offload it at this point, um, we're not going to get very much overall benefit. So we really want to focus on this this uh, one loop that uh, we found, and it says that we should get almost a 1.9x speed up, and it shows the it shows the time that it spent uh, executing on the CPU, and then the expected time if we were to offload it onto the GPU. So that's about half, um, which is a pretty good performance gain. And then it shows um, the, the, um, how it will be bound once we do that offload. So in this case, it's only compute bound which is um, which is good as long as we can utilize or fully utilize the GPU, then uh, we should get um, the um, you know pretty close to that estimated speed up. Uh, let me go into some more details. So I can click on this loop and I can see just some more information here about um, you know throughput, Data transfers, it uh, looks like uh, data transfers um, and cache utilization is not going to be a major factor in, um, in performance. So it's all going to be the, uh, the compute. And we can see here, um, because we packaged up the sources uh, when I did that, that snapshot command, we can see the, the loop here and uh, at what point we can, um, we can, you know, what section of the code we can do the offloading. And then uh, advisor gives some hints on how we can, um, how we can actually implement that offloading because you can have, there's a, a lot of different ways to do that. Um, it, it suggests uh, using a unified shared memory um, and an example in, um, in Sickle using um, um, some malloc functions. And we're not doing any, we're not doing DPC++ development in this case, this is just uh, OpenMP. So I'm, I'm curious about what it says about the OpenMP map clause. And it gives an example of the uh, a pragma we can use to do this offload. And um, the, um, the map um, directives. So what I did in the, um, in the earlier part, I guess, um, earlier in the presentation, uh, Corey reviewed how you can, how you can change the Mandelbrot sample to run um, the offloaded code. So, you know, basically we just copied one of the existing functions, added um, a pragma very similar to this one um, that we see in advisor. And I just did this ahead of time to help improve the flow of the demo. Um, but it's, it's basically the same, the same command that advisor is recommending except that because it's a nested um, for loop, I, I use um, the collapse um, to directive here in, in the pragma, uh, let's see if I can highlight, oh, I guess I can't, um, in, the, in the pragma to, to, collapse, um, to collapse the loops. So we're, um, we're looking at, at both loops instead of just the inner loop. And uh, yeah, otherwise, it's it's very close to this um, the command that uh, advisor recommends. So now, uh, now that we have that, there's not um, we know what the expected performance should be, and um, now we just want to try it out and see if it actually um, it actually performs uh, as um, predicted. I'm going to run another survey analysis, but this time I'm going to tell it to profile the GPU and I'm passing it the 
argument of five, which is telling it to use that offloaded function um, we described uh, earlier in the presentation. And um, as you saw in, if you look at the slides, it's a very simple kind of copy and paste. Um, there's not a whole lot of changes to the code, just make it use this function independent of the other, um, the other functions in the code. And then um, there was a change to the make file. So actually we can just um, look at that really quick here. Um, we just, it, where it was just telling it to, to use uh, OpenMP in the original make file, um, we've changed it to, to tell it um, um, how it can offload to targets. So giving it this, um, this fopenmp targets um, um, option will uh, help it do that offload and tell it that it can do an offload. So, and that's, that's really all we um, did. Oh, and changing the, um, the C++ compiler to use ICPX. So this is the new uh, version, um, the, the using LLVM uh, compiler is part of the one API base toolkit. And you'll notice that I didn't, I didn't actually do, uh, when I ran advisor there, I didn't do any setup on this node. This is a brand new node that I just started. Um, one API is essentially just ready to go when you get, uh, when you sign on to one of these, um, these nodes. So you don't have to do any configuration. It just works. Um, so that's nice. Fin and so finished the, um, the survey analysis and this one uh, I'm going to do um, that trip counts collection uh, with flops and again tell it that we're profiling the GPU and I, I'm sorry I didn't mention why I'm running these commands these commands are going to generate a, a GPU roof line so they the CPU roofline report has been available for a while in Intel Advisor. And now this is uh, the same type of report except for the GPU. So that you can see um, when code is executing on the GPU, how does it, um, you know, how does it use those resources? those resources, is it uh, compute bound, which we are expecting in this case, because that's what offload advisor told us, or is it memory bound? Uh, so that'll give us some, uh, some hints as to um, how we can further optimize this. It will also give a general report of the, the GPU utilization so that we can see uh, how how the performance changed when we offloaded to the GPU versus the OpenMP parallelism on the CPU and see how close we got to what advisor or offload advisor predicted. So that is um, all of the, the um, commands I need to run. There's only two in this case. And then I'm going to create that, uh, that snapshot again so that I can, um, I can copy it back to my local machine. And like I said, if you don't have advisor installed, there are commands that you can generate HTML reports if you don't have it on your local system. I just um, um, preferred generally to just use the, the application itself, but um, either way is gonna work. And then once this is done creating the snapshot, I can, um, I can copy it over to my uh, local machine here. 
and it shouldn't take very long. Um, I, th I don't think it has too much longer to go. Um, so I'll just wait and show you how you can set up the VTune um, profiler server when we're done, because that's also a quick, uh, a quick setup. I don't like to have too much dead air, but like I said, I think this is going to finish soon. And then copying it should be fast. Um, it looks, we do have some, uh, a summary here in the command line of um, um, the elapsed time and, and total CPU time. And already, you know, without looking at the, the graphical results, uh, we can see that it's actually significantly higher um, than our, our non-offloaded version. So that's something that we're gonna to wanna to investigate because it, it looks like it's not necessarily the GPU um, offloaded function itself, but something added to the CPU usage that uh, increased the overall um, execution time. And then this should be done. Um, any time now, uh, let me go back to the welcome screen and open my results. Let's see if they're done yet, almost. And by the time I get to that folder, it should be done. So let's just make sure I don't have incomplete. Okay, it's done. So I can um, can open this up here. And then um, since we don't have a particular project open, uh, these are just two separate results. Um, we can kind of view them side by side in these uh, using these tabs in the upper right. Um, so looking at this, um, it looks like the elapsed time is almost five seconds. So if we look at the the original um, summary, it shows 1.72 um, seconds. So that is uh, significantly higher here, um, but the GPU time is is uh, 0.728 seconds. So this is the time that it spent on the GPU, and this we can look at the task that was offloaded um, and see that this particular loop. Um, spent you know almost um, the 0.73 seconds on the GPU, and that is a performance gain over the original uh, one um, in some change seconds that it ran on the CPU. Not quite that um, that um, half a second mark, but it is uh, an improvement um, over the original um, execution time of this particular task. So what it looks like is there was some overhead added to the CPU that uh, in order to offload this. So we want to take a look at what that is and how can we um, mitigate that. And for this particular workload, it is uh, significantly um, higher execution time overall, but this is a very small workload. So uh, if we had something that ran for you know several minutes versus a few seconds, um, then the, the addition of a few seconds overhead is not going to be as, um, as substantial. And but in this case, it would still be nice to, to review what's causing that overhead. 
And we can look at the, the GPU roof line. And as the offload advisor predicted, it's, um, it's compute bound. So it's sitting underneath uh, one of the, the, um, the CPU roofs and it's sitting under this um, double precision vector add peak. So if we can get it to use um, um, different instructions, um, the fuse multiply add, the uh, or single precision vector add will get better performance. So that's something we can we can try to um, to push this up the um, um, up the 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 CPU um, uh, roofs and see and and get that better performance. The, there's no issue with uh, memory utilization here, and um, I can look at my compute tasks here, and um, it's automatically a, a, a outside any task. And this is where it's spending um, all of the, the CPU time, basically. So it uh, advisor isn't doesn't know what this task was, um, but we can investigate that further after we just take another look at our um, our offload um, compute task. So nothing else in this workload was offloaded. So the GPU performance is zero, um, but this case it was. So you get some of the, the GPU performance um, metrics, the work size and uh, you know, the, um, the memory usage and, uh, and a lot of different um, metrics to see if there is something that might be causing a bottleneck in the compute utilization um, versus the uh, memory and any, um, any other uh, data transfers and things like that. So um, this, is, this is going to be pretty helpful in, in trying to um, optimize. But overall, this, the, the GPU um, offloading is performing pretty well. It's just this extra overhead that slowed down our overall um, uh, um, execution time for our application. So what I wanna do now is go into um, the VTune profiler and see uh, a timeline of what was running in this. And, and the VTune profiler is actually going to show um, the the hardware, um, do a hardware collection. So show how um, it's utilizing the hardware in a little more detail. So what I wanna do is set up a the VTune profiler server so I can easily, um, I can easily view, view it in the browser. And this is, uh, Um, this means that I'm not actually going to run VTune on uh, the VTune application itself on my local machine. All of my all of my VTune usage will be in the browser. So this is a, a really nice um, uh, interface here, and um, so let me let me see. So let me. Um, let me log out of this. It's saying that my my port is already in use. So I may have I may have already uh, run uh, run this on um, this particular port. Let me let me go ahead and change that. Um, and if this if this happens, I believe it's caused just by um, something. I probably timed out when I was using VTune. So, oops, I need to also change somewhere here. Um, so there's just a process I need to see on my local machine that might be using that port. But um, the, um, the VTune developers just recommend this port, and this is doing some some forwarding 
um, a, you know, some um, networking stuff that I don't have a whole lot of expertise in. But this, in this way, I'm just using my local system on this port to access my um, my GPU node that I already have set up. So my GPU node here, it's uh, S001 dash N140. So let me um, do that. So now I'm connected to this, um, to my, my GPU node. And what I wanna do is run, um, run the VTune backend command. And this is going to, um, VTune backend starts the VTune server on this particular node. I'm going to tell it to use this uh, this port um, 55002, and then enable server profiling will allow me to profile uh, this node that the VTune server is running on. So this is very um, simple way to use VTune to profile a workload on um, on a node you're already using um, without uh, having to. Um, install VTune uh, application locally. So here's my um, my URL. Oops, I, I always do that. Sorry, I, I killed the process because I forget that Control C does that on Linux. And let me. Open up this URL. Okay, so it is telling me it's not secure, and that's because it just it just does some self signing, and there um, you may get a some kind of warning that says, oh, it, you know, it's not secure. It's just because it's self signed, but um, but that's not that's not an issue and won't prevent anything um, any utilization of VTune. And so here I'm in my um, my Chrome browser, I have VTune. It looks just like the GUI um, that I that you can um, use in the application. And I'm going to configure an analysis. Uh, the VTune profiler server. And this is uh, the one that's pointing to my, um, my uh, dev cloud node. So I don't have to change anything there. What I want to do is I want to launch my application. So um, I've already I've already run this a couple times, so it's already here in my um, application path. And then the parameters I'm giving it five to do the offloaded version. And then the uh, the analysis type I'm going to run for the demo is this GPU compute media hotspots. So um, there are you know, some, some warnings that uh, you may not get, um, uh, you know, you can probably configure if you're looking at, look, you know, running kernel modules and, and things like that, but that we're not doing any of that uh, for this demo. So um, the, the uh, default settings are gonna be fine and I'll just start it. Let me open this up a little more. And this doesn't, um, this won't take too long. And um, we can see the application output. It just um, um, directs it to this VTune um, window here. And um, it's, it's just saying that it can't find um, debug information for some of these libraries, which is fine. Um, if there's, there's a library you see in the list that you are expecting to have debug information for, then you may wanna make sure that you're um, 
that you're setting the 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 VTune collection to look for the path to those uh, to those symbols. But in this case, uh, it's very simple um, uh, application. So I'm really just concerned with looking at this one um, this one task here. So here we have um, a lapse time pretty close to what advised, uh, the GPU roof line and advisor gave us. And then the GPU time is, is a little bit better. Um, you know, the performance it, um, may vary by a little bit, um, but overall, this is uh, very much, uh, very close to what advisor told us. And we can see that there's just the main um, GPU computing task here, and that it is um, um, compute bound with the high FPU utilization. And then we can look at um, a diagram of the, the memory subsystem and hierarchy. So in this case, we don't really have any issues with data transfers or memory utilization. There is a little bit of uh, L3 miss um, um, percentage here, but overall the, the execution uh, unit is active um, the vast majority of the time. And so you can get, get details of where your bottlenecks may be in the data transfers and, and memory utilization here. And then this, this um, um, this chart at the bottom is very, very much um, what um, what we saw in the GPU roof line as well. So it's just um, it's just telling us more um, different information about GPU utilization. And then if you go to this platform tab, this will actually show a timeline view of what was running. Um, throughout the application, both the um, you know the the CPU and then GPU. So we see that there's a big portion of time here before it actually gets to the um, the GPU execution of you know over four seconds. So you know it doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot here, except for there's this task called ZE module create. And I know that this is actually the, um, the jitted code uh, that, um, that, the, that gets run um, in order to do the offload to the GPU because we haven't, we haven't told it anything um, during compile time about what GPU it needs to offload to, or what the the best one is? We just said, hey, you know, we want to we want to target a um, a GPU. Go find it and go do it. Um, but it needs to get information, so it's doing this um, this jitted code here. And I know that if this is a significant part of the overall uh, um, execution of the application. There is a way to um, to move this out of the runtime and put it into the compilation step, and there that's um, uh, the ahead of time um, compilation, and so it can have the information already about the GPU that you can uh, you can specify the um, the platform and GPU information, and it'll do it'll do this ahead of time and add to the compile time, but save time um, when this application is running. So that's that's something that we can look at. And then just looking at the, uh, the, the GPU utilization here, and you can you know, take this and zoom in uh, to get a closer look and find where uh, your bottlenecks might be. Um, and I think that's going to be it for the demo. And like I said, the purpose of this is not necessarily to completely optimize this particular sample, but to go through the flow of taking a, uh, you know, a CPU sample and going through the offload process using the one API tools we have available. So I hope you found this useful. 
And um, I guess I'll wrap it up here. Thank you for watching.